Lesson 5 The Good News of the Judgment Sabbath Afternoon April 22 Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 The heritage of the people of God is discerned through faith in the word of God. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John chapter 17, verse 3 Through faith the children of God obtain a knowledge of Christ and cherish the hope of his appearing to judge the world in righteousness until it becomes a glorious expectation. For they shall then see him as he is and be made like him and ever be with the Lord. The sleeping saints shall then be called forth from their graves to a glorious immortality. When the day of deliverance shall come, then shall ye return and discern between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. When Christ shall come, it will be to be admired of all those that believe, and the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Faith and Works, page 115. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. The Lord is soon to come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Is there not enough comprehended in the truths which cluster round this event and in the preparation essential for it to make us think solemnly of our duty? Distinctly and clearly this subject is to be kept before the people. The Son of Man shall come in his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 and 32. Present the truth that is needed in every church as the means to an end, and that end the judgment with its eternal decisions and rewards. God will render to every man according to his work. This Day with God, page 296. The final judgment is a most solemn, awful event. This must take place before the universe. To the Lord Jesus the Father has committed all judgment. He will declare the reward of loyalty to the law of Jehovah. God will be honored and his government vindicated and glorified, and that in the presence of the inhabitants of the unfallen worlds. On the largest possible scale will the government of God be vindicated and exalted. It is not the judgment of one individual or of one nation, but of the whole world. Oh, what a change will then be made in the understanding of all created beings! Then all will see the value of eternal life. Letter 131, October 14, 1900, to Elder A.G. Daniels Sunday, April 23 The Significance of the Judgment Hour in his teachings, Christ showed how far-reaching are the principles of the law spoken from Sinai. He made a living application of that law whose principles remain forever the great standard of righteousness, the standard by which all shall be judged in that great day when the judgment shall sit and the books shall be opened. He came to fulfill all righteousness and as the head of humanity to show man that he can do the same work meeting every specification of the requirements of God. Through the measure of his grace furnished to the human agent, not one need miss heaven. Perfection of character is attainable by everyone who strives for it. This is made the very foundation of the new covenant of the gospel. The law of Jehovah is the tree. The gospel is the fragrant blossoms and fruit which it bears. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 211. And behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, 
Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. The coming of Christ here described is not his second coming to the earth. He comes to the Ancient of Days in heaven to receive dominion and glory and a kingdom, which will be given him at the close of his work as a mediator. It is this coming and not his second advent to the earth that was foretold in prophecy to take place at the termination of the 2300 days in 1844. Attended by heavenly angels, our great high priest enters the Holy of Holies and there appears in the presence of God to engage in the last acts of his ministration in behalf of man, to perform the work of investigative judgment, and to make an atonement for all who are shown to be entitled to its benefits. The Great Controversy, page 479. I present before you the 51st Psalm, a psalm filled with precious lessons. To the King of Israel, exalted and honored, the Lord sent a message of reproof by his prophet. David confessed his sin and humbled his heart, declaring God to be just in all his dealings. Psalm 51 verses 1 to 17 quoted. Sin is sin, whether committed by one sitting on a throne or by one in the humbler walks of life. The day is coming when all who have committed sin will make confession, even though it is too late for them to receive pardon. God waits long for the sinner to repent. He manifests a wonderful forbearance, but he must at last call the transgressor of his law to account. It is not safe for us to close our eyes and harden our consciences that we shall not see or realize our sins. We need to cherish the instruction we have had in regard to the hateful character of sin in order that we may repent of and confess our sins. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 3, page 1147. Monday, April 24, God's Mercy and Judgment Those who do not realize the sinfulness of sin are not able to appreciate the value of the atonement and the necessity of being cleansed from all sin. The sinner measures himself by himself and by those who like himself are sinners. He does not look at the purity and holiness of Christ. But when the law of God brings conviction to his heart, he says with Paul, I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Romans chapter 7 verse 9. God created man for his glory. He will not, cannot endure the presence of sin in his dominion. Look up, my brethren. Has the gospel lost its power to impress hearts? Is it because the regenerating influence of the Spirit of Christ has died away that hearts are not purified, sanctified, and prepared for the Holy Spirit? No, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of the living God, is with us yet, but it must be wielded with earnestness. Let us use it as did God's sanctified ones of old. By its living, quickening power, it will cut its way to hearts. The Upward Look, page 16. What a terrible record the human race will have to meet in the last day, since the vast majority of men have refused the priceless offering, rejected the richest gift that God could bestow upon the world. It is through the inestimable gift of Christ that all our blessings come. Life, health, friends, reason, happiness are ours through the merit of Christ. Oh, that the young and the old might realize that all comes to them through the virtue of Christ's life and death and acknowledge the ownership of God. Sons and Daughters of God, page 238. The character we cultivate, the attitude we assume today, is fixing our future destiny. We are all making a choice, either to be with the blessed, inside the city of light, or to be with the wicked, outside the city. The principles which govern our actions on earth are known in heaven, and our deeds are faithfully chronicled in the books of record. It is there known whether our characters are after the order of Christ. To be pardoned in the way that Christ pardons is not only to be forgiven, but to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. The Lord says, A new heart will I give unto thee. 
the image of Christ is to be stamped upon the very mind and heart and soul. The Apostle says, And we have the mind of Christ. Without the transforming process which can come alone through divine power, the original propensities to sin are left in the heart in all their strength to forge new chains to impose a slavery that can never be broken by human power. Reflecting Christ, page 303. Tuesday, April 25. A Magnificent Scene Those who place themselves under God's control to be led and guided by Him will catch the steady tread of the events ordained by Him to take place. We are to see in history the fulfillment of prophecy, to study the workings of providence in the great reformatory movements, and to understand the progress of events in the marshalling of the nations for the final conflict of the great controversy. There is need of a much closer study of the Word of God, especially should Daniel and the Revelation have attention as never before. The light that Daniel received from God was given especially for these last days. The unfulfilled predictions of the book of Revelation are soon to be fulfilled. This prophecy is now to be studied with diligence by the people of God and should be clearly understood. It does not conceal the truth. It clearly forewarns, telling us what will be in the future. The solemn messages that have been given in their order in the Revelation are to occupy the first place in the minds of God's people. Last Day Events, pages 15 and 16. A careful study of the working out of God's purpose in the history of nations and in the revelation of things to come will help us to estimate at their true value things seen and things unseen and to learn what is the true aim of life. Thus, viewing the things of time in the light of eternity, we may, like Daniel and his fellows, live for that which is true and noble and enduring and learning in this life the principles of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, that blessed kingdom which is to endure forever and ever, we may be prepared at His coming to enter with Him into its possession. Prophets and Kings, page 548 Because they cannot fathom all its mysteries, the skeptic and the infidel reject God's word. And not all who profess to believe the Bible are free from danger on this point. The Apostle says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 It is right to study closely the teachings of the Bible and to search into the deep things of God so far as they are revealed in Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 while the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, those things which are revealed belong unto us. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29. But it is Satan's work to pervert the investigative powers of the mind. God intends that even in this life the truths of his word shall be ever unfolding to his people. There is only one way in which this knowledge can be obtained. We can attain to an understanding of God's word only through the illumination of that Spirit by which the Word was given. And the Savior's promise to His followers was, When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Steps to Christ, pages 108 and 109. Wednesday, April 26, A Glimpse of Heaven It is the mingling of judgment and mercy that makes salvation full and complete. It is the blending of the two that leads us, as we view the world's Redeemer and the Law of Jehovah, to exclaim, Thy gentleness hath made me great. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 36 we know that the gospel is a perfect and complete system revealing the immutability of the law of God. Mercy invites us to enter through the gates into the city of God, and justice is sacrificed to accord to every obedient soul 
full privileges as a member of the royal family, a child of the heavenly king. By faith, let us look upon the rainbow round about the throne, the cloud of sins confessed behind it. The rainbow of promise is an assurance to every humble, contrite, believing soul that his life is one with Christ and that Christ is one with God. The wrath of God will not fall upon one soul that seeks refuge in him. God himself has declared, When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant. Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 and Genesis chapter 9 verse 16. God's Amazing Grace, page 70. In this life we must meet fiery trials and make costly sacrifices, but the peace of Christ is the reward. There has been so little self-denial, so little suffering for Christ's sake, that the cross is almost entirely forgotten. We must be partakers with Christ of his sufferings if we would sit down and triumph with him on his throne. So long as we choose the easy path of self-indulgence and are frightened at self-denial, our faith will never become firm and we cannot know the peace of Jesus nor the joy that comes through conscious victory. The most exalted of the redeemed hosts that stand before the throne of God and the Lamb, clad in white, know the conflict of overcoming, for they have come up through great tribulation. Those who have yielded to circumstances rather than engage in this conflict will not know how to stand in that day when anguish will be upon every soul when, though Noah, Job, and Daniel were in the land, they could save neither son nor daughter, for everyone must deliver his soul by his own righteousness. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 215 Listen to their voices as the redeemed sing loud hosannas and as they wave the palm branches of victory. Rich music fills heaven as their voices sing forth these words, Worthy! Worthy is the Lamb that was slain and rose again for evermore. Salvation unto our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And the angelic host, angels and archangels, covering cherub and glorious seraph, echo back the refrain of that joyous triumphant song, saying, Amen! Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God for ever and ever. Revelation chapter 7 verse 12. Oh, in that day it will be discovered that the righteous were the wise ones, while the sinful and disobedient were foolish. In Heavenly Places, page 371. Thursday, April 27. Jesus is worthy. The Savior is presented before John under the symbols of the Lion of the tribe of Judah and of a Lamb as it had been slain, Revelation chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. These symbols represent the union of omnipotent power and self-sacrificing love. The Lion of Judah, so terrible to the rejecters of His grace, will be the Lamb of God to the obedient and faithful. The pillar of fire that speaks terror and wrath to the transgressor of God's law is a token of light and mercy and deliverance to those who have kept his commandments. The arm strong to smite the rebellious will be strong to deliver the loyal. Everyone who is faithful will be saved. He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew chapter 24, verse 31. The Acts of the Apostles, page 589. In Christ we have everything that is needful for us in this life, and that which will make up the joy of the world to come. All the money in the world will not buy the gift of peace and rest and love. These gifts are provided for us through faith in Christ. We cannot purchase these gifts from God. We have nothing with which to buy them. We are the property of God, for mind, soul, and body have been purchased by the ransom of the life of the Son of God. 
The Lord Jesus laid aside his royal crown. He left his high command. He clothed his divinity with humanity in order that through humanity he might uplift the human race. He so appreciated the possibility of the human race that he became man's substitute and surety. He places upon man his own merit and thus elevates him in the scale of moral value with God. Through the grace of Christ we may be strengthened and matured, so that, though now imperfect, we may become complete in Him. We have mortgaged ourselves to Satan, but Christ came to ransom and redeem us. We cannot purchase anything from God. It is only by grace, the free gift of God in Christ, that we are saved. That I May Know Him, page 83 are our people reviewing the past and the present and the future as it is unfolding before the world? Are they heeding the messages of warning given them? Is it our greatest concern today that our lives shall be refined and purified and that we shall reflect the similitude of the divine? This must be the experience of all who join that company who are washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. They must be arrayed in the righteousness of Christ. His name must be written in their foreheads. They must rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Christ has engraved the names of his people on the palms of his hands. He will never lose his interest in any dependent soul. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 56. For further reading, the SDA Bible Commentary, Undeviating Integrity is the Only Safe Course, Volume 4, page 1171, and God's Amazing Grace, Wages or Gift, page 313.